nooit aan die lach kom nie, en allemaal sê ek is noors, bly ek die baas van die huis, met big shot op my bors. Dad spoke prophetically into our lives from a young age. And I will never forget the simple truths he taught me. Just like to be humble, and to be friendly, and to be friends with everyone. And they say, when the father dies, the son becomes a man. And the great leeuw, the mighty lion, was gone. And the small lion had to take his place. And God started sending people into my life, sharing his love and relating their life stories and that was time for me to make a decision for him. And one Sunday morning after a heavy night before, at a party of one of my mate's houses, I found myself sitting in church. He was calling, and the call was loud and it was clear within my spirit. And I knew I wanted to make the commitment to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, because I knew I was a sinner, and that I have drifted off and far away from God. That day the pastor spoke, and it felt like he was speaking directly to me. You know what I'm talking about. The Bible says God is light, and when he shines upon you, it is your conscience that speaks to you. I was tired of hangovers. I was tired of not sleeping. I was tired of the fake glory of man. And I chose to give my life back to God that day, in the church, publicly, and in front of people, and just crying and repenting of my sins. And I, was, and I accepted Jesus Christ in my heart completely. I wanted Him to consume every part of me, and He did. That's what makes it so awesome. He did, if you mean it. And He made me new. God makes you a new creation, and He wipes away your past. Your past cannot haunt you, because Christ has died for you. Again, I wanted to be different. I no longer wanted to live the lie, to be lukewarm and to live proclaiming to be a Christian, but not walking or really living like one. I had a burning within my soul to serve God and people, and to find God and to really know Him. And because I had made the decision to seek God's kingdom first, above everything else, He started to change things in my life, and He will change things in your life as well. I wanted to serve people, and to forget about myself, to see people coming to in, into the kingdom of God and finding Jesus Christ and finding true freedom and peace and restoration for brokenness. Because that is what Jesus brings us, life in abundance. I knew that I was chosen to fulfill God's plan for my life and not my own. And God has a plan for your life and you need to, you need to fulfill that. God had stationed me in a specific position to reach people and to share with them what He has done in my life. God has called us to be fishers of men and to live in love with one another. I'm a warrior for the kingdom of God and I will stand on His word with my life and with all that I have. In 2005, I met Yuanne, my then girlfriend, and now my wonderful wife. A woman who loves God more than me, who is my best friend and the most beautiful woman on earth. Someone who was willing of walking a road less traveled, and who had a heart for broken people. Something I wanted, and God blessed me with her in abundance. And even in our relationship, we made tough choices and set boundaries to keep ourselves pure before marriage and really become best friends. And we still reap the rewards of that till today. And you can too, if you make tough choices and put God first above yourself and your partner. Remember that the devil wants to destroy your relationship and that your relationship is the first test of your faith. 
And I always say that charity starts at home. It's no use telling the world about Christ, but my relationship at home is in an order. I really want to, to encourage the people in relationships before they get married to, to keep themselves pure and really build yourself up in Christ and find out who you are in Christ and not to build your life around your partner but really seeking God in all you do and put God first in your relationship. My rugby career started to soar and I was chosen to play for the Springboks in 2006. And my test debut was actually a nightmare, losing 49-0 to Australia and then being dropped from the team. But I got a second chance and then gave a man of a match performance. was a World Cup year and the excitement was building, having had a successful Super 14 with the Bulls and winning the trophy. But after that, all the roads led to France. I was selected in the World Cup squad and was voted the favourite as a player of the tournament without it even started. And two weeks after the squad announcement, in our training camp with the Springboks, I started to cough up blood and had chest pains and had pain breathing. And our team doctor took me for some tests and had a few looks at me. And then the shocking news hit us again. And I had blood clots in my lungs. I was thinking to myself, God, what is happening? Blood clots? I mean, God, you must be joking. We're on our way to the World Cup, the highlight of my career. And I'm walking in your ways, God. I live a healthy life. I look after my body and I train hard, and I don't use illegal substances. And doctors said that I would be out for a minimum of six months by using the blood thinning medication. And they even said I would never play rugby again. And immediately I knew God was in control. I didn't know exactly how, but his word says he has a plan for our future and that we've been healed by his wounds. Walking in faith was what I did now. I wrote on a big poster and I said, healed in Jesus' name, because I knew God had the power to heal me. My faith was in God and not in man. Otherwise, his word would not have been true. And my faith was truly tested. And this was the biggest test of my life. But I made a decision to praise God, even if I stayed sick or get healed, because I know God's plan is bigger than mine. And I had to submit to his will. I had to make an unconditional choice, just the way God loves us. There was a lot of medical tests done on me, from head to toe, which I have never done. And always in my car, on the way to hospital, I put on the praise and worship music. And I screamed and I praised God with a loud voice, knowing that whether these lungs are sick or if they're healthy, I'm gonna praise God and I'm gonna keep on, for He is good. God is always good. I want to tell you, you keep with your decision in your tough times. You keep with it and you keep on keeping on. Remember, for with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. After the six months period of medication, after a lot of trials and tests and tough times in the media, a miracle happened and God healed me. Doctors said it was impossible. I would never play again and most people with blood clots never get off the medicine. But God is moved by faith and not by world systems. And I put my faith in God. And He did a great work in me. And He can do the same for you if you put your faith in Him. And if you keep on trusting Him. And I was able to play rugby again and to pursue my career. And I even got married at the end of 2008. Which shows God's great love and His mercy. And how quickly He can change your life in the blink of an eye. If you just keep faithful.
my message to you today is quite simple. And that is that God has a plan for your life. Doesn't matter what race you are, how old you are, or if you're male or female. You might feel insignificant, you might feel worthless, but I'm telling you, you are worthy because God has created you worthy and God has a plan for your life. And I want to encourage you by making a decision for Christ and by offering your life to Him as He offered His life to us. May God bless you in this and may you keep on keeping on even when things are going tough. If you've watched this DVD and feel like you want to commit your life to Christ, I'm more than willing to pray with you. And I'm asking you to pray after me and really ask God to come into your heart and renew you. Let us pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner, but as your child. And I want to give my life back to you. Thank you that you have died on the cross for me and that you have risen and made me new. From today, I choose to live for you forever and ever. Here I am, Lord. Use me. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you have made a decision today for Jesus, I want to encourage you to get involved with your local church. If you can offer any service for the glory of God, that is worthy. If it is packing out chairs, as I did in the beginning, that is how you start. But when, once you get involved in your church, you really start to build your faith and you really put your commitment to where your decision is. I also want to ask you and tell you that you need to read your Bible more. You need to pray more so you can build your faith. Because God has now done something in your heart, something new. But that needs food. Your spirit needs food to grow like a newborn baby as your spirit has been reborn. You need to build your faith with the Word of God and just to pray to Him. Even if you feel like you don't know how to pray, just pray, pray a simple prayer with the right heart. Because God looks at our hearts, but man looks at the outward appearance. Just keep on keeping on and God will come through for you. May God bless you in this. Yeah.